Hey, this is Luke Simons with Salt Strong. In this video, we're going to teach how to retrieve a soft plastic jerk bait. This is the type that has the split tail. There's a lot of different manufacturers that make these, and this one in particular is a, a DOA in case you're curious. But what we're going to cover is the, the best retrieve method that I've been able to find. Also show the, uh, the, the actual what it looks like underwater. So we grabbed some underwater footage of what this looks like, and it is actually uh, it's pretty cool. They look like a really good bait. But uh, third thing is I'll go over the hook that I found works best. All right, so before we go into the, the actual tree method, really the number one thing to know is that you have to rig it properly. Because if you don't rig it properly when, you, when you're actually retrieving it, it's going to be helicoptering, meaning it's going to be spinning around and just will not look natural, It'll spook fish. So if you don't know how to rig these, I'll, I'll put a link down below where, where I'll show exactly how to rig them the, the best way possible. Extremely, extremely important, so I wanted to put this in there. But let's go ahead and uh, do the retrieve method. All right, so here's going to be the, uh, the proper retrieve method, and this, these type of lures, are, they're just really, really good for, for fishing shallow water, anywhere from three feet or less, and I'll just go ahead and show you how to do it. And uh, so in this case, we'll just show you the example of either a calm day or a day like today where it's windy, but we're casting with the wind, is I like to keep the rod tip up. Uh, this way I can uh, actually feel, just feel everything better. I like to first let the bait fall down on the bottom, and then as soon as it happens, just do these short little twitches. Uh, it's called a double twitch style where you can see the rod is barely, it's maybe moving from, uh, I don't know, three to three o'clock to two o'clock, but in two short little twitches and then let it drop. And in most cases, the strike happens on the drop. So as it's dropping, make sure to just feel, you know, feel for a strike. Or uh, if, if it's windy like today, you can uh, just watch your line. And as soon as you see the line, just do a, a sharp, sharp movement. You know you have something on and you can set the hook. But, uh, but again, this technique, has, uh, has seemed to outperform the other. You can always try to do a single one or even a triple, uh, but uh, for, for whatever reason, the, uh, the double really uh, really has seemed to work, work extremely well. All right, so in this one, we're gonna pretend that it's real windy if we're, if we're dealing with a crosswind. And uh, in this case, you can't, if you have your rod tip up, that crosswind is just gonna be taking, it's gonna be having too much friction on your line, it's, it's actually gonna move the, the lure without you moving it. So on a crosswind, you almost have to go down, where you, instead of putting the rod tip up, uh, just keep it down close to the water. That way the, the line is actually on the water, the wind can't mess with it, and, uh, and you can't feel quite as good, which is why I prefer to cast with the wind whenever possible, but, uh, but it is more effective than, than holding the rod up, because when you're holding the rod up, that lure will continually be moving forward due to the wind, and there's really nothing you can do about it other than uh, putting the rod tip down. All right, as far as the retrieve speed, this is something that you should, you should really uh, test out throughout the day. Sometimes fish are more active and you can go faster. Sometimes they're sluggish and, and go slower, and it's always just all day, day dependent. So I usually start with kind of a medium one where I'm basically just trying to bounce it along the bottom, where I just wanted to do two twitches from the bottom and then fall back down on it and then two twitches again. But sometimes when they're really active, you can go much faster and keep it higher up in the water column. Uh, but then other days, then when they're really sluggish, like on a really cold winter morning, you almost have to just barely crawl it, where you just do two, two stops and just barely retrieve any line, and then do another two, couple short ones and go extremely, extremely slow. So again, it's really all dependent on the day, on the circumstances. The most important thing to know is that you can just adjust the speed to whether the fish are, are really hot or if they're sluggish. All you have to do is, if they're biting really good, you can speed up. If they're very sluggish, slow it down. All right, so as far as hooks, this one, this one right here has been, I would say, the most effective hook I've been able to find for these soft plastic baits. I really love uh, th these little screw-on type at the top where it really helps, helps you catch way more fish per bait than this, uh, this standard style. This is what I used for years. I grew up a bass fisherman. This is all I knew, and uh, it does work. Don't, don't get me wrong, it, it certainly does work. I caught a lot of fish with this. But, uh, but this type of hook has two huge advantages over this worm-style hook. First of all, as I mentioned, that the screw-on factor where you can, it just has a much better hold on the bait. With this one, as you catch fish, it'll tear the, the top of the bait and you'll eventually not be able to use it. Whereas this just has a much better hold, it will not tear nearly as often. And the other big advantage, probably the biggest advantage, is the weight. Having the weight on the shank is a huge help in the fact that it helps the bait not helicopter. Where the, uh, uh, here's one that's rigged, same one from the tutorial, is uh, here's what it looks like rigged. Let me get this hook off there is how it works is this weight just ensures that, this, that the bait stays in, this, in the same position throughout the retrieve. Uh, without the weight, it really, it'll increase the odds that it's gonna, twir gonna twist and twirl, which again is just not natural. It'll scare fish away. Uh, the weight really helps it just keep the lure in the same position. And as you're working it, it'll kind of dart back and forth, up and down. 
and it just looks really good in the water and we'll show you some of the underwater footage right now. All right, so that's just a quick uh, retrieve video on, on this, how, to, how to work these type of baits and also you know, how, what type of hook to use. Uh, as far as those hooks, the, the worst thing about them, these are made from owner, I, I love them. The worst thing is that they're hard to find. So, so we went ahead and bought some in bulk and, and we're selling them from our site. So I'll, I'll put a link down below in case you have trouble finding them uh, that we can pick them up. But again, it's all about retrieve speed, vary it as the day goes on. And, and you'll see that the fish will respond to a fast and slow one uh, differently throughout the day. So it's all about just, just keep in mind of what you're doing, remembering what works, just find the trends, and uh, I'm sure you'll be catching more fish soon. So if you have any questions at all, you can leave a comment down below. Uh, otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you again soon. There's something about the water that'll give you peace All by yourself or with your family Live salt strong and wear the line today